at E to P. Remember the entrepreneurial spirit? I was hitting a ceiling and I was so frustrated by hitting that ceiling. And everyone else around me said, look how great John's doing. And inside I'm saying, this sucks. I hate this. Right? So I desire leverage so much that I finally, I got the bloody nose and I got the pain that made me change my behavior. I wanted it bad enough. So we talked with Jean Rivers at Lee's house in a, in a, at her dining room table, and he went around the table and challenged every one of us, didn't he, that night? And when he got to me, he said, John, what do you need? And every head went, looked right at me. They all could have told him. He needs an assistant. He's an idiot. <laughs> he is stupid, and he's doing everything himself. And there's just no way. I was doing too much business at the time for one person to be handling it. So guess what I was doing? I was working from the time I woke up until I went to sleep. I took a little bit of time for family here and there, but they were an afterthought, and I was squeaking them in to my schedule. That doesn't feel good after years and years of that. That is not having a life worth living. And I was tired of it. Done. Totally done. I, if I didn't change that, I would have gotten out of this business or done something. That's how frustrated I was with this. So I decided to put some money aside, which is what Gene, when he figured out what I needed, put some money aside and don't touch it for a few months. If you still are paying your bills and doing okay, then you go hire an administrative assistant. That's exactly what I did. So that person was hired to do the 80%. Then when we got comfortable, I had my second hire of Kathleen. I had the talent level to take it to another level, and then we started with the buyer agents and, and that kind of thing. And we had the revenue to build the team bigger. We've done over half a million dollars worth of business, and I'm not doing sales full time. Both of my teammates have made over 120, 130,000 TCI this year. That's, our goal was 100, right? When Grace came to me, she was making 60,000, something like that, $62,000 a year in a corporate job. And when she was a friend of Carrie and mine, when she would see us, she would always come to me and say, if I don't lose my job, I'm getting in the real estate business, and I'm going to come see you. And I kept saying, Grace, you would be great at real estate. One day, she called me and she goes, John, it's Grace. I'm like, is everything okay, Grace? What are you calling me for? You usually call Carrie, you know? She's like, no, I'm calling you on purpose. I just lost my job. <laughs> they just downsized, and I'm a um, victim. I go, you sound a little happy. What is going on? And I forgot about her saying, you know, I'm getting in the real estate. She goes, I scheduled my real estate classes, and I'll get it. So when we sat down, after she got her license, I said, what do you want? What do you want? She goes, I want to replace my income. That's it. I'm going to make $60,000, $62,000 at the end of the day. And I'm like, that's cool with me. That's a pretty good goal first year, right? So guess what? First year, she did it. And she's been growing and growing since. Um, This, keep this in your head. You need leads. Have that be the focus. You need appointments. We're out to get appointments. If we get appointments, we're going to convert them, right? People are going to like us. You're all likable people. I like you. Your customers like you, right? You're pretty nice to them, and you do everything needed to get them to where they need to go. It's not your service that's the issue, although I think even me, I can get better at the service part of it. But service isn't the issue. It's the leads, number of leads, number of appointments. Converting them. Then you get the listings. The third step is the leverage. That might be someday. That's why we do one, three, five. Right? We put a goal out there. Um, I want to talk last thing about lead generation. We have six minutes. Okay? I promise you I'll let you go at four or five. 
lead generation is what we do really for a living. Right? It has to be always turned on. I remember Paul Allen when I was young in the business. I worked for Allen Realty with Mike um, in the 90s. And I was right out of college. And Paul would take me out to lunch sometimes, and he, he was mentoring me. And every waitress or waiter, every one of them he recruited into the real estate business. He never stopped lead generating even as the owner of the company. He wasn't selling anymore, but he was looking for good realtors. Guess who he found? I think it was at Burger King, but I'm not positive. Linda Van Hull. I think she was a manager of a, of a Burger King. Why was he eating at Burger King is what I wanted to know. But that was totally <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Quick and easy. Um, so... Uh, Jack Lacey came into his office back in the 70s, late 70s. And if you remember Happy Days, I, some of you are too young, but Happy Days was a guy named Arthur Ponzarelli. Everybody called him the Fonz, right? <laughs> and the Fonz, it's Henry Winkler for the, those of you that are young. Um, and he played the part. All right, so he came, our, uh, the Fonz used to wear a white t shirt, a leather jacket, and jeans, correct? Yeah. That's exactly what Jack looked like when he came to the office. And he said, I want to become a realtor. And Paul was like, okay, sit down, let's talk, you know? And within an hour, Paul said, you have potential to be the best real estate agent in Bucks County. And Jack was like, really? And Paul said, yeah, I'm gonna help you get there. You wanna do it? And uh, Jack was like, yeah. So he went to school, got his license, for a long time, he was the number one producing real estate agent in Bucks County. And Jack, or Paul helped him get there. I, you know, and Jack would say that. But you can't judge a book by his cover. Jack understood lead generation. Paul didn't really have to teach him that. He was just like Paul. Everywhere he went, he talked to him. Do you know anybody who wants to buy or sell real estate? Hey, do you know anybody who wants to buy real estate? Hey, do you know anybody who wants to invest in real estate? That's the way Jack was. It was like, it was like dude, get back. Shut up, right? His friends were like, come on. And then he started selling everything, and they're like, wow, that worked. He was talking about real estate all the time. He was on. It's like the switch was turned on. Um, that was Jack's way. Um, MREA and mega agents, so millionaire real estate agents. And remember I said you could cross that out and say successful real estate agents? Always lead generate. So if you don't have a plan for lead generation, forget the plan we just did that you just put in numbers. Forget it. Throw it out. Believe it. We'll send it to you when you get the right mindset and decide to lead generate. Um, listings are marketing opportunities, right? What do we want more than anything? Referrals, right? I built my whole business on referrals. Because I wanted warm leads. I wanted people to call me. I remember when we were at Allen Realty, Bob was with us too. And we were sitting around sometimes going, the phones aren't ringing. Why aren't they ringing? You know? It's like, oh yeah, that's right, we gotta make them ring. Duh. 2008. What? 2008. 2008, yeah. We were sitting around, I literally was sitting in my office going, what am I going to do for a living? I think real estate may be gone. Nobody can get a loan. The banks were falling apart everywhere. It was scary time. And I remember Paul Allen saying to all of us, if we can survive this, we're going to thrive. And he was absolutely right. And... He told us in 2005 when we opened up this office that we were going to be number one in Bucks County in 2010, in five years. And 2008 happened in the middle of it. Guess who was number one in 2010 and never relinquished number one in Bucks County? K.W. Langhorn. <laughs> Listings give you marketing opportunities. 
You put a sign in the lawn, sometimes you get calls, sometimes you get internet leads, right? You, you have opportunity to double pop it. If you don't double pop it, you're selling something else, right? Whatever. They give you opportunities, they generate leads. Buyers tell people at the water cooler at work about you because you're such an awesome realtor. Listings allow you to control your time. If you have enough leads and listings, you can control your time. I got enough. I'm not Nancy Cassidy. I got time. I made my calls. Right? She can take time off during the holidays. It maximizes your per hour compensation. It's a little bit another level of thinking, but right? If you control listings and business and leads, you maximize your per hour. If I have enough seller listings and I don't even have to sell a buyer, I'm happy if I'm making enough money, I'm good. I'm controlling everything I want. And then we also control market share, which helps every one of us. The more red signs they see out there, the more transactions that are promoted and sold, helps all of us. How many times do you go on an appointment and they say, oh yeah, you guys sold the house down the street, or you guys sold my sister's house, or blah, 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 right? Um, think units and then volume. Forget volume, honestly, for the most part. We talk mega agents, 10 billion plus production, right? We talk about volume too much in my view. Think units. How many units? What's my average sale price? How many units do I need to break that down monthly like we did on that chart? That will help you, I promise. It keeps it more in focus. Saying 10 million sounds hard. Saying 30 transactions is less than three a month sounds less hard. It's still 10 million at the right average sell price, right? right? Any questions before I let you go? Thoughts? Did you learn anything? Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Thanks so much for coming. I will let you all know when part two comes. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I actually think it's a great idea. Before you leave, what we call them ahas. Why? A H A agents helping agents. That's an aha. Okay. What's the aha you just got today from the two hours we spent? Let's get four of them and then we'll leave. Christina? Uh, the biggest one I had is stop looking at the book as one thing. Both can actually break it down into the chapters of More than that. Don't follow his example. No. <laughs> follow my example now. Not how long I took it. Sue, did you hear your hand up? Yeah, it's really about the, um, the listings with the leverage. You just always do something. Like always do something. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. John? Plans and models. Plans and models. Systems. Systems. Perfect them. You might have a system, Bob, you got a good system. Somebody looked at Bob's system when he was at Remax and his comment was, can I just say, his comment was, Bob, you should be doing a half million dollars worth of business with this. You're set up. Plug and play, man, let's go. What are you doing? Right? That was that person's perception looking at how he was so advanced to that agent. Right? So. Implement the systems, perfect them. Um, there's a slide here. I saw it. Uh, I'll get to it in part two. We'll talk about it. There's a there's a cycle we go through. Set goals, do the work, close the thing, evaluate, and get back around. Right? It's it's that's what we do every. When we close a house and we have no pending businesses, what do we say? We're out of business. I'm out of business. I need new leads, get pending, right? That's what we're talking about. So what can you do to improve that cycle that we get in? And then when you have the system, you perfect it. You figure out what works and what doesn't work, right? And then you keep going. That's, what we, that's how we should think. 
Thanks so much for coming, guys.